In the early morning of 19 August 1942, under cover of night, 237 ships and landing crafts approached their destinations. On board these ships, the final preparations for the attack were made. The invasion fleet did not go to their destination as one convoy, instead, they went separately, from different ports directly to their destination. Also, unlike Operation Rutter, Operation Jubilee did not have one assembly point, but troops were gathered and boarded the ships in various ports in southern England. Everything went according to the plan, but not for long. At 3.47 a.m., as the landing force on the way to the Yellow Beach approached the coast, they encounter a German Navy convoy, escorted by three armed vessels, traveling from Boulogne heading for Dieppe. The German ships, immediately opened fire on the landing crafts and their escorts. During the fight, which lasted for one hour, many ships were damaged, communication was disrupted, and confusion arose. To avoid the fight, many landing crafts veered off course, some of them were damaged and had to return to England, some stayed near the escort ships for protection. In these circumstances, the decision was made to cancel the landing on a yellow beach. However, in all this confusion, seven landing crafts, unaware of the situation, and without communication with headquarters, continued their way to the coast determined to press on with the attack. Six of these seven crafts, with approximately 120 men, under the command of Captain Richard Willis, moved to Yellow One Beach, and only one landing craft with just 20 men, under the command of Captain Peter Young, moved to the Yellow Two Beach. The elements of the Third Commando, under the command of Captain Willis, with a handful of U.S. Army Rangers, reached the Yellow One Beach at 5.15 a.m., well after the schedule. By that time, a noise of the naval battle in front of the landing beach, and fighting that already started on the other landing beaches, alerted the German defenders, who took their positions. The Germans opened fire on the landing crafts, as they approached the shore. Many men were killed right on the beach. However, most of them reached the shelter of the cliffs, where they regrouped. Although they managed to get inland, the German ad hoc assembled reinforcements, stopped them in their advance, and eventually pushed them back. As their landing crafts were either sunk, or withdrew under the heavy fire, commandos did not have any other option but to surrender. Of 120 men that landed on Yellow One Beach, 37 have been killed and others were wounded. Among those that were killed was Lieutenant Edward Lustelo, a United States Army Ranger, who was the first American soldier to be killed in the European theater of operations. On the Yellow Two Beach, a party under the command of Captain Peter Young, landed on the shore at 4.45, unopposed. They quickly left the beach, cutting the barbed wire with the hands and knives. Moving inland undetected, the twenty-man strong force, realized that they cannot overcome the German defense, and destroy the artillery battery. Instead of the frontal attack, they started a small arms firefight from distance, disrupting the gun crew from firing. They managed to divert battery attention, for a considerable amount of time, however, they run out of ammunition, so they decided to withdraw. Heading straight to the beach, they embarked on the same landing craft, that brought them on shore. Now they went to the safety of the English Channel and back to England. On the western end, of the landing area, a fourth commando started the approach to their target. Commando forces were split into two main groups, and headed to the designated beaches. The smaller of the two groups, under the command of Major Mills Roberts, landed on the Orange One Beach, according to the schedule, undetected. Using the Bangalore torpedoes, they managed to cut the barbed wire and move inland, reaching their designated position at 5.40 a.m., still undetected. The main force of the 4th Commando, under the command of Lieutenant Colonel, the Lord Lovett, landed on Orange 2 Beach, under the fire of the two German machine guns, located in the pillboxes on the cliffs overlooking the beach. 
although with losses, they quickly moved inland, destroying the machine gun pillboxes on their way. Moving from the flank, at 5.30 am, they reached the planned position, right behind the coastal battery. However, not everything went according to the plan. Right after a group of Major Mills Roberts, reached their position. A naval battery opened fire on the Canadian troops on the way to Dieppe. Major Mills Roberts, immediately ordered his troops, to engage the battery with small arms. His men were equipped with the one, small two-inch mortar. The second mortar grenade fired, hit the battery ammunition storage. The explosion was massive. All the guns fell silent, and chaos arose in the German lines. After the pre-planned air attack, both parties of the 4th Commando attacked the battery. The fighting was short, and the battery was overrun. For his action during the attack, Captain Patrick Porteous, was awarded the Victoria Cross. Although wounded several times, Captain Porteous continued to lead his men during the attack. After a successful mission, men of the 4th Commando, went back on the beach, taking with them all off their wounded, and group of the captured Germans. Without any problems, they board the landing crafts at 8.15 am, and went back to England. During the raid, the 4th Commando lost 16 men, and another 7 were captured. Further to the east, in the area designated as a Blue Beach, a Royal Regiment of Canada started their approach. The attack was to begin approximately, at the same time as the attack on the Orange Beach. The Blue Beach was very narrow, and in front of the village of Puise. The success of the Royal Regiment of Canada mission, depended mostly on the element of surprise. Due to previous events, and the delay caused by the preparation for the final attack, the element of surprise was not something they could count on. The sounds of the naval battle, and the fighting around the Yellow Beach, alerted the German defenders who took their positions and waited. The attack on the Blue Beach soon became a massacre. The German machine gun fire was devastating. Most of the 554 men of the Royal Regiment of Canada were killed on the boats. Those who managed to reach the coast, were pinned down in their cover without any chance to move forward. Only few managed to reach village, all of them were either killed or captured. Out of 554 men, only 64 managed to get back to England. On the Green Beach, initial landings went according to the plan. The South Saskatchewan Regiment landed on time at 4.50 am, without significant problems. However, one crucial mistake was made. According to the plan, B and C companies, were supposed to land on the eastern bank of the River C, and companies A and D on the western bank. As they approached the shore in the dark, during the night, all companies of the South Saskatchewan Regiment, landed on the western bank of the River C. This meant that companies B and C, should cross the small and well-defended bridge, to complete their objectives. As the A and D companies, completed their tasks securing the bridgehead on the western bank of the river, according to the plan. Progress of the B and C companies, was stopped in front of the bridge. German positions completely dominated the area, and all attempts of the river crossings were stopped. Only due to an act of extraordinary bravery, of Lieutenant Colonel Charles Merritt, a commander of the South Saskatchewan Regiment, progress was made. Lieutenant Colonel Merritt, walked, to the bridge and urged his men to start crossing. He went back and forth over the bridge, under the heavy German fire, escorting the groups of his men, as they were crossing it. For this action, Lieutenant Colonel Merritt was awarded the Victoria Cross. Although, parts of the South Saskatchewan Regiment, managed to cross the bridge, destroying several German positions on the way, progress on the eastern bank of the river was stopped very soon, by the fierce German resistance. The landing of the Queen's own Cameron Highlanders of Canada, was intentionally delayed for additional 30 minutes. This decision, 
was made by Cameron's commanding officer Lieutenant Colonel Alfred Gosling, fearing that South Saskatchewan Regiment will not be able to secure the landing beach in 30 minutes, as it was initially planned. Lieutenant Colonel Gosling will also be a first victim during the landing of the Camerons on the Green Beach, shot dead by the single shot, as he disembarked the landing craft. The same mistake that happened to the South Saskatchewan Regiment, happened to the Camerons as well. The bulk of the battalion, was landed on the wrong, western bank of the River Sea. Instead of a planned advance on the eastern bank of the river, the decision was made, to move inland from the western side of the Sea River. The groups that landed on the eastern bank, were ordered to join and help the South Saskatchewan Regiment, while the rest of the battalion made their advance. Although the Queen's own Cameron Highlanders of Canada, managed to penetrate further inland than any other troops that day, their progress was eventually stopped, by arriving German reinforcements. Unlike the other beaches, where the element of surprise was crucial, the main attack of the Dieppe, started with a short naval and air bombardment. The four Navy destroyers, opened fire ten minutes before infantry landings, and approximately at the same time, RAF planes, attacked the buildings near the beach with bombs and cannon fire. The second wave of RAF bombers, dropped smoke bombs to protect the advancing landing crafts. The attack on Dieppe, depended heavily on the attack from the flanks. Since both flanking attacks, on the Blue Beach, and the eastern flank of the Green Beach were stopped, allowed German defence to concentrate on the approaching force, consisted of the Essex Scottish, and Royal Hamilton Light Infantry Battalions. The initial landing, on the White and Red Beach, went without major problems. Troops landed on shore, with few casualties, facing limited resistance. However, while still on the beach, trying to make their way through the barbed wire, Canadians were suddenly faced with devastating machine gun and mortar fire. German defenders, recovered from bombardment, were again on their position, firing from all directions. The situation on the beach became chaos, everyone tried to find cover. German snipers, prevent almost any movement on the beach itself, most of the officers were dead, any further advance was impossible. The arrival of the tanks from the 14th Canadian Tank Regiment, should have to change the course of the battle. However, instead of swift advance, most of the tanks, stuck in the soft, shingle beach. Those tanks that managed, to get off the beach, faced concrete tank obstacles which prevent them to move from the seafront. Encouraged by the arrival of the tanks, small groups of Canadians managed to fight the way to the city, occupying the first few buildings closest to the beach. Among these buildings, was a city casino, on the beach itself, turned by the Germans into a strong point. Some groups even managed to penetrate deeper into the city, but were forced back by the German counterattacks. Major General John Roberts, commander of the 2nd Canadian Infantry Division, from his headquarters ship, was not able to clearly see what was going on the beach, due to the smokescreen. He knew that assault is not going according to the plan. For that reason, he decided to send all of his available reserves into action. The Fusiliers, Monroyal Battalion, was sent to help the Essex Scottish on the Red Beach, and the Royal Marine Commando was sent on the White Beach. Arriving on the Red Beach at 7 a.m., the Fusiliers Monroyal, had nothing to do but to share the faith, of the men already there, seek the cover, and trying to stay alive. The landings of the Royal Marine Commando, on the White Beach have been cancelled, right in front of the coast. Only two landing crafts, unaware that landing was cancelled, reached the shore. None of the Royal Marine Commandos, from these two crafts returned to England. By 9 a.m., it became clear to everyone, that the attack had failed. There was nothing left to do but to evacuate the troops. Major General Roberts, order a withdrawal to start at 10.30. Because of the fixed RAF schedule, 
the withdrawal was postponed for additional 30 minutes. Fighting on the yellow and orange beaches, were long over. All rescue attempts on the blue beach failed. The South Saskatchewan Regiment and Camerons on the green beach, timed their withdrawal, to be on the beach at 10 o'clock. The delay of the evacuation put them in an uncomfortable situation. Closing their perimeter too soon, they allowed Germans to take the positions from which they could cover all the beach with devastating fire. During the chaotic evacuation, two battalions on the Green Beach, lost more men, than in all heavy fighting during the morning. A similar situation was on the beaches in front of the Dieppe. By 12.15, the evacuation was over. During the fighting on the ground, the aerial battle of epic proportions raged up in the sky. During the fighting over the Dieppe, the Royal Air Force, lost 106 aircraft, while the Luftwaffe lost 48 aircraft. The Royal Navy, lost 33 landing crafts, and the destroyer Berkeley, suffering 550 dead and wounded. The losses on the ground were horrific. The 2nd Canadian Infantry Division, out of approximately 5,000 men who participated in the operation, lost 3,367 men, of whom 962 were killed, the rest were wounded or captured. Out of around 1,000 commandos, overall losses were 270 men killed, wounded, or captured. The German 302nd Infantry Division, lost 311 men, while another 280 were wounded. Lessons learned from the raid on Dieppe, will be implemented, in all upcoming landings, starting later the same year, during the Operation Torch in November 1942, and later during the invasion of Sicily, landings in Italy, and finally on D-Day, two years later. In his attempt to justify the raid on Dieppe, Lord Mountbatten said, I have no doubt that the Battle of Normandy, was won on the beaches of Dieppe. For every man who died in Dieppe, at least, ten more must have been spared in Normandy in 1944.